Okay, so our turkey is done. It looks incredible. As you can see, the skin is super crispy. This is what we are going for. Um, I took this to 165 degrees internally. Now, I'm gonna let this rest. What's gonna happen as it rests is, right now the protein, the, the muscle fibers are really tight and there's a lot of juices rolling around inside there. As they start to relax and kind of soften up, they're gonna take those juices back on. So when we cut the turkey open, there's not gonna be juices all over your board, there's gonna be juices in the meat. So that's really important. Now there are a lot of questions over whether you cover or don't cover the turkey. Some people like to take a piece of aluminum foil and put it on top. I don't do that. The reason I don't do that is while that foil is sitting on top, all this heat that the turkey is going to give off is turning into steam and all this crispy, amazing skin is just going to get soggy. Also that steam is going to change the consistency of your turkey meat itself. So we're going to leave it just like this, uncovered, let it sit on the counter at room temperature for about 20 to 25 minutes. I promise you when we cut into it, it is still going to be piping hot because remember the bones are hot, the meat is hot, all those juices inside are hot. So our turkey has rested for about 25 minutes and like I said, it's still very hot, it's beautiful. I'm gonna get rid of the tray, but these drippings are awesome for making a gravy, a sauce, anything like that. We're gonna cut this cord away that we wrapped the turkey with earlier. All right, so let's get started. Now, you can see, like I said, the skin is very crispy. The turkey has this amazing sheen, this amazing glaze over it. That's from the olive oil. First thing we're gonna do is remove the wings and just gently pull them, run a knife through the joint, and you can see they pull off very easily. The next step is we're gonna separate the quarters, which is the leg and the thigh. So I'm gonna come in close to the breast and just slowly slice down. And once I get to the point where I feel like the bone has come kinda of loose, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure. That's gonna separate it and then come down with the knife. Any meat that you're missing on the turkey, we can grab later. Now, to separate the breast, there's a breast plate that comes right down the middle. What you're gonna do is run your knife and then it's gonna naturally take you to one side or the other. Long, smooth strokes are gonna allow, and you can see how hot this turkey is, it's still steaming. Long, smooth strokes are gonna allow this breast to free up clearly and nicely. And using just a little bit of pulling tension, you're gonna be able to free this up completely. Leave the skin attached for when we slice it. But look at how moist and juicy this is, it's incredible. What I like to do is grab from here when I do the other side, it gives me a little protection having the breastplate here from any slips with the knife. Beautiful. Now looking at our turkey, most of the meat is off. If you have some areas in here where there might be a little bit of extra meat, you can pull it with your hand or you can leave this on here and simmer this later to make a great turkey soup. Flipping the bird over, there is a chunk of meat here that's absolutely delicious. You could just pull that off by hand. Save the carcass because you can use it for a soup, you can use it for a sauce, you can use it for anything. So let's build our Thanksgiving platter. First thing I'd like to start with, obviously take the wings, put them on the platter. I love those, they're crispy, they're, they're delicious. Then I'm gonna flip the leg over. Now if you play around with your knife, you'll find there's a spot in here where your knife is just gonna slide right through. And again, the leg's something I like to leave whole. Now, if you look in here, there's a line on the turkey under the meat. And if you follow it with your knife, you're gonna go right through the cartilage and the joint on the leg, making it super easy to cut through. I typically like to remove the skin from the dark meat and I'll chop it up and add it to the platter. But you can either just pull the dark meat right off, leaving it in larger chunks, or you can take your knife because there's only one bone and trace along the bone with your knife. And that's gonna free up your dark meat, allowing you to cut it into slices. It's amazing how juicy this is. Don't forget about that meat that we pulled from underneath the turkey either. That is kind of the best part. It's kind of the prize of the turkey. Now the last part is the breast. And this is the part of the turkey that obviously overcooks the most. It's normally the driest one you'll get because it doesn't have the fat that the leg and thighs have. We're gonna leave our skin on and slice right through it. So the reason I like to do this, is I like the varying textures and flavors of skin and white meat. It also makes a really amazing presentation. 
If your turkey's cooked right, it shouldn't be falling apart when you slice into it. It should be just a nice slice of meat. And I'll show you in a second. But a well-cooked piece of turkey should be succulent. It should have muscle fibers to it. It should hold together. And then we'll do the same to the other breast. Place that right on our platter. It looks absolutely amazing. And now any little spots where there might just be some open exposed metal from the tray, I'm just gonna add a little bit of sage. It's gonna add a pop of color to the platter, but also just really bring in another amazing aroma to this whole thing. And there you have it, Thanksgiving dinner.